Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about credit cards, I think. Maybe a little bit about debt, maybe a little bit about loans, maybe a little bit of all those topics mixed into one fun video. Um, it was about, or this, I'm making this video because I had a conversation the other day and it really was not shocking, but interesting to hear some of the things that people said regarding money differences between, well, what I observed, the United States and Germany. And so with all that being said, I'm gonna keep this intro short, simple, and sweet. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to leave Leave a comment down in the comment section if you feel so obliged to do so the floor is yours and so the conversation about debt credit cards and money that I had with this group of people there are around 18 of us in this group and we were openly talking about money the scale of earning started I want to say at around the lower or not the lower the higher tens lower 20s so around 18 to 22 thousand and went all the way up to a hundred thousand plus where I am right now in Lee County so Cape Coral I I would say that the average salary for a professional that they have listed online is around forty to forty-five thousand dollars. So I felt like the the average was about right <laughs> for the group of people that I was with. But it was interesting because I said, "What did I say that really started this conversation?" Because it was because of me. Because I said, "Oh well, I have to purchase something," and I think the amount was maybe two thousand dollars. So then someone chimed in. And I said I was gonna pay cash. And someone said, oh, well, I'd have to put that on my credit card because I would not be able to afford that with cash. So it was just interesting to see people that were earning all different types of money on a scale, and none of them were able to save money or have any money saved in their bank account. And I guess because maybe it's because I'm with Mike and Mike is very sparsome, but I feel like most Germans that I come into contact with are very sparsome or they're very saving, sat, sat, saving savvy when it comes to money. I've just become accustomed to even people that are on the lower end of earning and the lower bracket of earning, they still have a tiny nest egg. And this was just not something that even people earning $100,000 a year didn't have a nest egg, or if they did have a nest egg, it was a very tiny little, it wasn't even a, like a chicken egg, it was a quail egg. And I was like, hey, do y'all not, do y'all live in like a constant state of like stress and anxiety for not having money? I do think that the history of Germany plays a huge role in how Germans are regarding saving money. Um, so I'm not really going to get into, I guess the nitty gritty of that. I think if you are an intelligent person, not even intelligent, if you just have a minimal amount of brain, you can connect those things together and I don't have to get on here and pretend like I know anything about history because I do not. But there are some reasons, I think like two reasons that I'm gonna talk about in this video, why I feel like there is such a big difference between the United States and Germany regarding saving money. And so the first one is that we are a big consumer country in the United States. Something that has taken me a while to get adjusted to or I have become adjusted to is the non-consumer attitude of Germans. So I've, let, I don't know if I should preface this by saying I have my vices and there are things that I will spend money on like no tomorrow and then there are just things that are irrelevant to me. Big ticket items and needing new items every year to have the best or the newest is not something that I need or that I do or that I purchase anymore. And that's, I would say, something that is very American that we like to do. Um, people like to buy the newest TV. People like to buy the newest car. People like to buy the newest clothes. They like to buy um, the new things. And it's that saying, you buy things that you don't need with money you don't have to impress people you don't like. And I do agree with this to an extent, but there are also instances that people just enjoy shopping and they're not really trying to impress anyone. Sometimes people have a shopping addiction. Sometimes people just enjoy shopping. Sometimes people just like having nice things. It's not always with the, how do you say, core thought or idea to impress other people. So I do sort of agree with that, that here in the United States, we are maybe influenced by other people around us to purchase more things because everyone's purchasing more things. And in Germany, a lot of times that's not how it goes. You get something and you're gonna use it until it doesn't work anymore. What also makes this worse in the United States is we have this motto called YOLO. For the younger, well, for the older people that don't know what YOLO is, um, I'm introducing y'all to some hip words as if I am <laughs> 
young. I'm getting older, you guys. I met someone the other day and they asked me if I was born in the 1900s and I almost had a heart attack. YOLO, I feel like, represents the United States and it is you only live once. That is what Americans live by. I feel like Germans also live by you only live once, but the main difference is that in the United States, you need to make that life the best life possible, even if you may have, how do you say, complications later on. In this exact moment, I'm gonna be nice, comfortable, and have fun. And Germans, they're thinking for maybe the long run of being comfortable their whole life and not really maybe going above and beyond the bare minimum of comfort. Or I don't even want to say bare minimum because that sounds very negative. Nothing above and beyond is what I'm trying to say. And I think that there will be people that argue and say, well, Germans have this better quality of life or they do this better or they do that better. And I'm like, yeah, we can get into the, um, how do you say, comparison between who lives a more comfortable life but i'm talking more about materialistic consumer items and i do think that americans take the cake when comparing it to germans so the thing that allows americans to live this hyper materialism consumerism lifestyle are credit cards credit cards are found in germany they're found in the united states but in the united states Credit cards are everywhere. I feel like credit cards are, how do you say, preferred over cash in some instances. I went shopping the other day and they literally said, no debit cards, no cash, um, only credit. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I was like, this would never happen in Germany because it's gonna be like, bah, Etsy Karte, and it's gonna put in big letters, like in bold, italicized, underline, Keine Kreditkarte. So a credit card in the United States is basically like a revolving access to a credit limit. And when you're looking at the German translation of Kredit, because a lot of people use this in place of a credit cre credit card, Kredit Karte and Kredit, they are um, a little different. Even though the word Kredit looks and sounds like credit and it's used in Kreditkarte, there is like a minor difference. I'm pretty sure that Kredit in German means a loan or the equivalent to a loan in English and then a Kreditkarte is a credit card in Germany. And so a loan in the United States is the same as a Kredit in Germany. It's money that you take out that you have to pay back at a certain time or in certain payments and then once you pay it off, that's it. And a credit card, like I said, is the same thing Germany, the United States, you get um, a revolving amount of money that you have access to all the time as long as you're paying it off and you can usually have it for as long as you want um, in a set amount and there is a limit that you usually cannot exceed. So the interesting thing is that I don't own any credit cards in Germany. I own four credit cards in the United States and they're all used for different things. I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of my credit cards. It might be interesting for you guys to know the backstory. One of the oldest credit cards that I still have to this day, I think it's like 12 plus years old, is my Victoria's Secret card because it's for that particular store. Um, I can only shop there and it still gets reported to the credit agency. And I believe I got it because I worked at Victoria's Secret and I was basically pressured in there to get this credit card by management. It was very shady business tactics and I am still very upset that they pressured me into getting um, this credit card. One of the things that I had to do as a cashier, everyone that had to do this as a cashier, still has to do this to this day at Victoria's Secret as a cashier, was that I had to sign people up for credit cards. I also worked in the um, lawn care department, a lot of people don't know this about me, at another little department store, and one of the main things we had to do at that store as well was sign people up for the credit card of that store to finance basically their lawn mowers that they were purchasing. And so at Victoria's Secret, we would A, get paid, um, we would win, I don't know, company prizes, we would get recognized, we would, I don't know, get a shopping card, who knows, for hitting the credit card goals that we needed to meet for the week or the month. But there was one week where we were not getting any credit card sales as we'd like to call them, or applications. And so our managers, which I was 18, 19 at the time, they basically like asked us or begged us to sign up for a credit card so we could hit our weekly 
goal. So me and like three other girls that I worked with, we all signed up for credit cards. We were all teetering at around, I would say 18 to 19 years old. And they gave us, I think at the time, it went to like 4,000 plus dollars for a store charge card at Victoria's Secret. And I remember I racked that thing up you guys imagine you being 18 19 years old and you having access access to four thousand dollars and not knowing any idea of how it works you're just given this paper this card it says you have four thousand dollars on here and you're able to spend it. It racked up so much interest. It was a B to pay down. And so while I was in Germany, my main focus when I like was making a little bit extra money working at a kindergarten and being a nanny was putting that money, like transferring it back to my American bank account and using it to pay off my credit card. And I was able to pay off my credit card. I wanna say after like three or four years of living in Germany, I was able to pay that 4,000 bucks off. For me, that was a humongous accomplishment when I put in like the last $500 payment I like saved up all the money I said I'm gonna do one big last 500 buck payment and I did that and it felt amazing and it felt relieving and since then well not since then because I think I've had like a few cards since then but I have three other cards on top of that and those credit cards I use one I opened recently like last week or two three four <laughs> three four weeks ago I've been in Florida this whole time and I opened it because I've been flying so much and if I spent X amount of money I would be able to get X amount of miles and those miles were able to equate to a round trip economy ticket with that airline and I was spending the money that I needed in the first four months anyways on my flights to go back home <laughs> to Munich and so I was like oh well that makes sense I'll just you know buy the tickets with this credit card pay it off because I had to buy them anyways and then I'm going to use the miles that I have to buy my next flight that I'm going to be taking and then the other two um, credit cards that I have are just there one is in case of an emergency if something happens to me and then one is where I keep like I have a very low balance on it like I don't have any money on it but I have a very low credit line and it's just there for like frivolous things if I max that credit card out I think the limit is like 600 bucks I don't feel too bad but my other credit cards if I max them out they're thousands of dollars and I do feel a little iffy about that and so going back to my airline credit card which is something different between the United States and Germany and how credit cards are marketed the money that we are getting in the United States back from the credit card companies is basically how I think of it now that I've done a little research about these types of things is basically the money that they've made off of us like tenfold. So people, we like to say in the United States, oh, I'm getting miles. I'm at I, I'm saying this we're getting miles we're getting cash back we're getting all of these rewards um, so that's why I have the credit card that's why I use the credit card but in reality the credit card companies are usually making a buku amount of money off of us using and having the credit card in order to give us the measly you know even if it's a free airline ticket or even if it's a free I don't know hundred bucks here or there for them they're still making more than that off of us usually because the average American isn't paying off their credit cards because credit cards can be an amazing way credit in general can be an amazing way to build wealth in the United States but the issue is that many people <laughs> In the United States are not able are not at the tax bracket at, are not at the income level are not at the how do you say uh, fluidity <laughs> to be able to use credit as a means to gain wealth or to um, how do you say multiply your wealth and in Germany a lot of people they use credit cards loans all that good stuff for things like a new car buying things for a home home purchases home appliances purchasing a home, purchasing an apart apartment, purchasing things for your apartment, and not many people are using their credit cards to max them out to just have the revolving interest rates on it for things like shoes, clothes, groceries, light bills, 
any anything that you could think of your necessities to live and your non necessities to live you know and i think in the united states we have a very great area between these things uh what we're spending in the united states encompasses both of those things in germany and i don't know if i can say europe or not because i don't know but in germany a lot of people I don't want I don't know if I should say the majority but the majority I'm gonna say maybe going on a off a limb here are not spending loans and credits on the non necessity items and so referring back to the beginning of the video when I was talking to those people and they had no money in the bank and they were so shocked that I could pay two thousand dollars for something in cash the reasoning behind that is because their whole lives are on credit cards and the money that they receive is already gone that's something that is so shocking to me that the money that you make that you have worked 40 hours a week for that will be deposited into your account is already spent by the average I would say middle class American so you're probably wondering what happens to Americans if they do not pay off their debts now there are Americans that pay off their loans debts and everything completely there are people that pay the minimum there are people that pay nothing and there are people that lie in between all of those it is a spectrum I can only talk from the Florida laws and the laws that I know about off the top of my head and something that's very interesting that most Germans don't know about is that I think it's the statute of limitations in Florida for credit card no debt collectors to come after you is five years after that they are not allowed to go after you in a legal manner to basically pay that back your debts so they have those five years to come after you and a lot of times um, let's say a credit card company they will hire or sell your debt to a debt collector for a fraction of what you actually owe them and then they will send those debt collectors after you and those debt collectors will a like make a profit because you paid off the amount or b they'll make a profit from the credit card company that pays them from them getting the money from you and then you have the fair credit reporting act I think it's what it's called and that is for seven years that a delinquent debt can stay on your credit report and you guys are probably thinking what is your credit port report or what does that flow into and that is your credit score which could maybe be similar sort of equi equivalent to the German Schufa but the difference between the German Schufa and the American credit system is that we have the saying in the United States that no credit is worse than bad credit is that necessarily true true no but in Germany when you have Schufa and you have like no debts <laughs> you have no history that is generally a positive thing in the United States if you don't have any debts or anything in the past any loans not to say that it's a bad thing but it isn't going to make your life any easier and so we have this system where Almost everything that you have to do here is required for you to have a credit score and a credit report. Unless, like I said, referring earlier to the video, you are very fluid. But a lot of people in the United States, as I've said, are not. And so it's this constant cycle of having to use a credit card in order to get a credit score and try to get a good credit score so you have the purchasing power and purchasing ability here in the United States to have a little bit financial freedom, as people like to to say in Germany the Schufa can be used in the same way but like I stated since Germans aren't so credit heavy and since their Schufa isn't really as I would say um, probing as the United States credit score system you have a little bit more wiggle room and freedom regarding financial stability in Germany when it comes to um, Schufa and so what does this all boil down to because this is a lot of information it's probably overload for a bunch of people and if you made it this far thank you so much um you can leave a thumbs up if you did but when i'm in the united states you guys i don't feel like i'm doing good financially ever when i'm in germany i don't feel like i'm doing amazing but i feel 
comfortable. I feel semi-secure, regardless if I'm including credit, debit, cash, anything like that, loans. I just constantly feel like A, I'm not good enough, B, I don't have enough money, and C, that something is around every corner to like screw me over. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's because of the system that we have. I don't know if it's because I'm just like a shissa because I've been living in Germany and you Germans have turned me into a shissa. But I just sometimes feel here very overwhelmed when it comes to finances and that I'm always constantly making or going to make a mistake and that's something that I don't have or don't fear when I'm in Germany. Credit card you guys, I hope you learned something about the American credit card system. If not, um, maybe you like the next video. You guys can let me know what you think the differences are between the United States and Germany regarding credit cards, consumerism, materialism, how much money you earn, how much money you spend, and how much debt you have. And so yeah, with all that being said, don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you for watching and bye.